Hello everybody, welcome to Wine World TV, the best wine show anywhere. I'm your host, you know it, Mark Fusco. Before we get started, make sure you're smashing that like button and subscribing to the channel. Every like and subscription really helps build the channel. Even better, spread the word to your friends about the best wine show anywhere. Today's show will be the fourth of my six part series of Australian wines, four of which were donated to me by one of my followers on Instagram, Jason Carley, shortly after I took my advanced exam. I had posted on social media about not passing the exam and that I would be resuming my studies shortly afterwards. So Jason, thank you again for your generous donation. Penfolds, what does that name conjure up? Grange? Wines with bin numbers? Other wines with unusual names? Yeah, me too. Though unusual names isn't just them or even Australia, fanciful names are commonplace everywhere. Penfold started in 1844, founded by Dr. Christopher Penfold and his wife, Mary Penfold. They emigrated from England and purchased 500 acres of the choicest land near Adelaide in South Australia with the help of other family members. This was the McGill Estate, named for the suburb of Adelaide where it is located. They had brought vine cuttings from Europe with them to start their very first vineyard. The reason they started all this was to provide medicinal wines, mainly fortified wines similar to sherry and port. They had planned to create a wine tonic to treat anemia. One thing to note is that Mary is really considered the heart and soul of the winery, the quote, commander in chief, as the website puts it. This is a time when a woman having such command of a business was extremely rare. The winery's reputation grew over the years, and then in the 1950s, Max Schubert became their head winemaker. He's the person that created their most celebrated wine, Grange, something he had initially made in secret. The first vintage of Grange, 1951, was rejected by Penfold's top management, and he was ordered to shut down. He persevered, and by the 1960s, he was instructed to revive the project. Grange is the epitome of Penfold's wines. Besides Grange, Penfold's has quite a few bin wines. Originally, the numbering was related to where the wine was stored, so an actual factual bin number. These bin wines can be single-site and single-varietal, or multi-regional blends. This includes today's wine, Bin 389. This seems like a good time to mention that I've resurrected my merchandise line. I've retired my 1337 wine line, but now I have my WWTV and my hashtag outstanding line of merchandise. The outstanding line is all about positivity and it's based upon my response of outstanding when asked how I'm doing. I have polos, t-shirts, and accessories on Zazzle. Those are really for the WWTV side. Check out this sweet logo t-shirt I'm showing you. The outstanding line is all t-shirts. So far, I've only have a small number of variations of t-shirts for both lines with more to come. Link below in the description, so please check them out. Maybe buy one or two. Okay, back to bin 389. This is from the website. Bin 389 was often referred to as Baby Grange, in part because components of the wine are matured in the same barrels that held the previous vintage of Grange. First made commercially in 1960 by the legendary Max Schubert, this was the wine that helped forge Penfold's reputation with red wine drinkers by combining the structure of Cabernet Sauvignon with the richness of Shiraz. Exemplifying the judicious balance of fruit and oak, Bin 389 highlights the generous mid-palate Penfold's is known for. Some of the same vineyards that go into Grange also go into Bin 389, so that also helps reinforce the Baby Grange moniker. Just a little observation here, the founder's last name is Penfold, while the wine is called Penfolds without an apostrophe. Not sure why, but I find it interesting. That's just me. Maybe it's related to it being both a husband and wife thing. I'm not sure. Anyway, in 2011, Treasury Wine Estates, an Australian wine company, bought the estate and still owns them. They own or source grapes from their estate, Barossa Valley, Eden Valley, and other areas of South Australia. Let's check out the stats on this wine. The 2017 Penfolds Bin 389, about 70 bucks US. South Australia GI, 54% Cabernet Sauvignon, 46% Shiraz. The blend is different each year. Aged for 12 months in American Oak Hogshead. 29% new, 50% one year, and 21% two year oak. 14.5% ABV. Okay, let's get into this wine. Iconic wine. First of all, iconic winery, right? And this wine is a, it Baby Grange. I mean, I've heard it called Baby Grange for a long time. 
And I mean, I just explained why. Now, one of the things about the baby grains thing was that people think it's like declassified grains, and it's not, but there are elements that go into grains or helped make grains are why it's called that. I've had grains twice. I had like a little bit a few years ago, and then somebody I work with sold me his 2004 for a really good price. So, it was awesome. Now, is Grange worth the seven, eight hundred dollars US that it sells for right now? I'm not gonna speculate. I've had it and it's really good, but when we get wines at that price point, it's really hard for me to be like, oh yeah, it's, it's totally worth it. it. But it was fantastic wine, so what who might say? But it was like 2004, so yeah, it aged really well. All right, color, uh, really deep ruby color. It's consistent all the way throughout. Uh, there's definitely, I would say, moderate, almost moderate plus staining on the glass. So we've definitely got some good extraction here, and we definitely got some, you know, really good fruit, uh, dark, thin, thick skin, thick skinned fruit, uh, not thin skinned. All right, let's uh, check it out. So. We'll talk fruit first, but it's it's uh, the oak is really just coming through. But we'll talk fruit first. So, really rich and ripe raspberry, blackberry, blueberry, uh, plum, black plum. I mean, it's it's definitely rich and lush on the fruit. Very ripe, slightly overripe. We've got some some sandalwood, some leather, some but like fresh leather, not like old leather. We've got really the preponderance of baking spices. So, I mean, this is seeing, you know, I mean, I told you what the oak was, and I'm going to go back. You know, it's 29% is new, 50% is one year, and 21% is two year. This is, you know, neutral oak is technically three years and older. So, I mean, there's, what, 70, almost 80% new and first year oak. It's going to, it's going to impart a decent amount of oak age into it. And I wouldn't, I wouldn't put it past that, you know, because it had grange in it, the, the older oak, it's probably really imparting some of those aromas. But baking spices, cinnamon, clove, fresh earth, like really, really fresh tilled earth, potting soil, a little bit of eucalyptus, a little bit of mint. I, I say eucalyptus because it's Australia, but it is somewhat of a eucalyptus quality, a little bit of mint quality to it, fern, a little cocoa, a cocoa powder. Let's taste it. It's all there. The fruit stays the fruit stays lush, stays very ripe. Blackberry, raspberry, blueberry, plum, black plum, strawberry. Yeah, black currant. The soil is really fresh. A little bit of mushroom, but it's like really fresh mushroom. Leather. Fresh leather. The baking spices, the clove, the cinnamon. Remember the last wine? I talked about a little coffee, a little about roasted coffee or quote chemical. Um, again, it's fine. It's 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 part of the wine. I don't dislike it. This is the first wine of the of the, of the whole session that I've, I've sat today where the tannin is significant. The other red wines, they were medium at best. They weren't like letting you know they're there. This is letting me know it's there. I would say the tannin is high, medium plus at minimum, but I would almost call it high. Alcohol, you can really feel the alcohol. 14.5 is what's on there. It's definitely high alcohol. That's, that's the quote, beginning of high alcohol. I wouldn't be surprised if it's actually closer to 15, maybe pushing a little bit higher, but um, alcohol is there. But with that said, it's integrated really well. Like this is a well-balanced wine. It's integrated, it's lush, it's delicious, it's rich. You're tasting, it's complex. I mean, you're tasting a whole bunch of stuff out of this, smelling a whole bunch of stuff, and they all play nice with each other. A little splash back on that. I would say there's nothing disjointed. It's all balanced and well integrated. It's a very tasty wine. You can you can afford the, the cash on this. It's a great wine. Is it is it declassified Grange? No. Is it going to taste just like Grange? Well, it's I only tasted Grange twice, and really only tasted it once. It was like three, two years, well, two years ago. But this is good wine on its own. Delicious. 
and it's what, four years old, 17? Yeah, four years old. So not quite enough age really to like get into the age category, but it's, it's definitely youthful, still youthful enough. Good stuff, man. You should check it out if you can afford it. All right. Yeah. Anyway, that's going to do it for today's show. Again, if you enjoy what I'm doing here, make sure you hit that like button and subscribe and then tell your friends. And until next time, drink some baby grains, man. Cheers. <laughs>